Well, let's start with Suze Rotolo. She she didn't like me at all, even though I sent her, even though I gave her flowers. And um, she didn't, I mean, she didn't speak to me. She's she, I mean, I met her. I mean, I spoke to her, but she didn't cooperate. Okay. I can't remember. I pissed her off on for some something about it pissed her off, or she wasn't happy with me. So we had a conversation outside her apartment in Manhattan. I remember it vividly because I was so I was I tried so hard to get it right. I took her a huge bunch of lilies, which cost me a fortune. And, um, you know, I just did, I did everything I could to be charming, but I utterly failed to charm her. I, I just saw a little YouTube of a, you know, her sitting on a step actually talking about Bob, but her and former Mrs. Dillon are two you just don't hear much from. I think you had a brief call with uh, Sarah. If I... um, so Sarah who I was also, and to this day, Sarah Dillon is the great interview no one's ever got. But I did get her on the phone and she very wearily said something like, I forget, it's in the book actually. She said something like, um, what did she say? I can't remember, something like, oh really? Something like you're not serious or yeah, yeah. Not quite, yeah, not quite that, but it was a bit more urbane than that. It was something like, oh really? Or something like <laughs> very world weary, you know, are you really going to ask me this? And then she kind he of- He wasn't even impressed that you got her on the phone because even that is probably- Yeah, and that wasn't, uh, believe me, that wasn't easy. <laughs> Sally Grossman. I mean, broadly speaking, women, women uh, are better interviews than men. And in this kind of a book, the women are often really the good interviews. Uh, but you're picking the ones which weren't actually the good interviews, but they are interesting people. I mean, Sally was a very tricky, defensive, prickly customer, uh, very suspicious. And I had to go up to Woodstock uh, twice. And finally, in kind of a car park at midnight, smoking cigarettes, we had the kind of we had a conversation. I mean, the Rick Danko conversation was even even more difficult than that. That was on a tour bus, him taking drugs at night in the dark, rolling down the highway you know, with me on the other side of the table. I mean, that was bizarre. I think he thought I was his roadie. Um, or I think he, what I mean to say is I think he thought I was, to, I was there to help him. You know, I kind of volunteered to come along to help him, but rather than just, you know, there for the interview. But finally he did give me the interview with the light switched off so he could kind of rummage in his drug bag and shoot up without me seeing. All right, two women that maybe uh, you had more success with, Echo and Bonnie Bre Breacher. Uh, two early uh, relationships yeah. with Bob, and you're one of the rare people to speak with. Well, they're both just sweethearts. I mean, Echo was a sweetheart. I spoke to her just before she died, actually, up until recently. And, uh, you know, she's she's got a very discreet tale to tell. I mean, she only knew Bob in this very discreet period of time, but nonetheless, she's an important character. And Bonnie's a total sweetie, you know. I mean, she's the wife of Wavy Gravy, who's another lovely guy, and she's alive, you know in the Bay Area. Um, another really good interview was, who people probably don't know was, um, is it, I don't know, is it Carol somebody, one of the girlfriends, the record company. Childs. Carol. Yeah, she was really good. She was really good because she's, what, what you want from an interview is somebody who is indiscreet, expresses themselves well, and doesn't give a shit what people think. Um, and, uh, and she was all those things. And so there's some really good quotes from her. Actually, I, I kind of, bury them a bit in the prologue or in the introduction but she was very good on bob very insightful women are good on men because they see through all their bullshit and they they know them in a way that men don't know them you know the guy who plays the bass guitar behind bob for five years doesn't go to bed with him you know it's a different relationship obviously and but the woman who you know the woman in his bed knows him really knows him and that's why you should always interview the women not the men necessarily Okay. And, and one surprising name on the list, William Zenzinger. That was good. That was good. So that was a good bit of journalism, really. That's, that's kind of a good example of what I did for this book. Whereas Dylan kind of authors, seems to me often, many of them just kind of write about their kind of O-level English idea of what the lyrics mean. But I actually go and see people and ring them up. And I looked in the phone book and William Zanzinger was in the phone book in 1999. He was still alive. He was in the, in the phone book in Baltimore. And I rang him up one day and I said, you know, what a wonderful name. You know, there's only one William Zanzinger in the phone book. <laughs> and he was, a, he was, a, an he was, as you would expect, he was an aggressive, nasty bastard. And, um, and he said some nasty things, which were very quotable. And in fact, I taped him and I made it, that into a Radio 4, doc, Radio 4, BBC Radio 4 in England, 
uh, radio documentary, which in fact, I'm sure you can still hear somewhere called The Lonesome Death of Hattie Carroll. Some interviews, by the way, are very, very short, uh, but nonetheless, very, very important. You know, you can speak to someone for five minutes. I think Zanzinga was five minutes, but that's really important. Uh, some people, you speak to them for hours and hours. I spoke to Garth Hudson for days and he hardly said a thing that was intelligible. You know, it was just so frustrating. You know, some people are just so difficult to actually get through to. Some people give you five minutes. Robbie Robertson, for instance, gave me a few minutes and every single thing he said was quotable. Uh, and that's a really interesting thing, writing bi biographies, is you see how very, very different people are. And you never know until you get hold of them. You never know what they're going to be like. 